The Seacraft building was a huge high ceiling building and very, I mean, very empty. Well, you can imagine what a, an airplane um, you know, hangar is like. And of course, the funniest part is you've heard from everybody, no doubt, every time planes came over, they'd have to stop the play. We sat on the, on the, at the back on a brick wall and we'd heard all the rumours about um, the planes going over and things like that. Freeport in the very, very beginning uh, had no entertainment whatsoever, no cinemas, of course. We had no television. And then someone said, hey, what about forming a, a, a theatre group? And I remember saying at the time, my God, there aren't enough people, firstly, to get a cast and secondly, to get an audience. And the action froze until the plane was gone and it rained. So during the rain, you couldn't hear anything because of the tin roof. I was quite um, amazed at how uh, well they did a lot of these performances, and they were an amateur group. The first show we did was in a school room we had just built, which is now St. Paul's School. And I remember I was passed over as delivery man of the birthday cake, even though I'd auditioned with a superb Cockney accent. But I was one of the 30 people in the audience. And from that moment on, we formed the Guild. What amazed me most was that everybody dressed to the nines, evening gowns, furs, tuxedos, to go to this building where they sat on metal chairs. And if it rained, the parking lot was a sea of mud. So everybody lifted up their skirts and tiptoed through the mud to this building. The bar was at the very back of the building. So people stood back there drinking and watching the show. There were frequent power cuts and we used to bring cars in at the back and put the headlights on. And any rain on the tin roof, we would do had to ad lib and hope to God the rain would stop. And then of course from that, we, we raised funds and built the Regency Theatre. Um, Peter Aston was one of the driving forces behind it and we named the auditorium in the Regency Theatre after Peter Aston. A, a lot of people, uh, Betty McConville, Jack Dredge, Eileen Dredge, his sister, David Brooks, uh, Margaret Brooks was also fantastic in the early days. There were so many people very, very dedicated uh, to raise money for the theatre. And um, Patty Bloom, a lot of others were on the committee, Jack Slack. And Keith Griffiths uh, very much helped to um, design the theatre. I, I always claimed that, uh, Freeport, that the Freeport Players Guild was the oldest organization, charitable organization in Freeport. In those days, of course, we had a, a lot of um, expats who owned their businesses here and um, the paint shops, you know, all wood shops, everything. And of course, whenever the Players Guild trying to build a theater uh, ordered things, they had the um, invoices come back paid or complimentary or whatever, but they were very generous in those days. So there was a lot of help from the community at large in um, building that building. Comedy obviously was the thing that the Freeport audiences liked best. It became a very integral part of, um, of Freeport life. It, it all went well, being one of the great successes of Freeport, uh, as, as it should. I mean, it is the finest theater in the whole of the Bahamas. It's been a, a great success, and um, uh, as I say, I, I, I couldn't be more proud to have been associated in the early days. In those days, if someone had said to me that there would come a time when people would say that I was one of the old timers, I would have laughed. But here I am. Well, you see, we had a lot of expats and their wives couldn't work. Um, Norma Sheeran, but she couldn't work. So she became, listen, the resident, she was there every day. And a lot of Bahamians are, are, have been involved in that theatre as well. Anthony Lockhart was Mr. Theatre. He was involved in everything. He could sing, he could dance, he could act. And he could ad lib. Just a great talent. What other Havanas are there? You want to take me to dinner in Havana, Cuba? But why not? They eat dinner in Cuba the same way as we do here. Oh, Adelaide. What a coincidence. <laughs> did, did nicely explain to you about tonight? I hope you ain't sore about it. Please. 
have no vulgar scenes here. He's always been that that way, you know, he's a very theatrical and we've always always had the same sort of sense of humour and yeah, he was in some very memorable roles, especially as the ugly sister in Cinderella. <laughs> that was fun. Fiona Rushton, as you I might remember, was um, very, very funny on stage as well. Um, that was my introduction to the theatre. Fiona Rushton, Alan Rushton, rest of the souls, they were. That was my first exposure to them. Well, between Margot and her crew, they were the makeup people for years and years, and they made all of us look good. Pat Myers is now the, um, well, she used to be the admissions director in RADA. Chris Child, who is now a professional actress. A couple of other people that have really gone on and done some wonderful things. Gloria McGlone for her superb direction. I mean, we're so lucky to have her here on a small island like this with someone of her caliber who actually knows what it's like to put your feet on a Broadway stage, you know. Jane Stratford was from the South and Jane loved the theater. She was down there all the time. She grabbed people up, she put you in her little car and she drove you down there chain smoking all the time. She was, she was a theater. She was any time of day or night she'd be there making a prop, cigarette in mouth, coffee in her hand. Always. She was a wonderful asset to the theatre. She had me down there one summer. We cleaned the whole prop room. You can still see my handwriting on some of the things in the prop room. You know, you always had someone that looked after it, like Uncle Bert. Uncle Bert looked after it for years and years. Um, Chris Baker. He, he was there every day. Every day he was there. The other person I thoroughly enjoyed working with was David Fingland. Excellent actor. Took it so seriously. You know, he would become that character so much. Jeremy Caffarata, he worked, we can't get him back to the, wish we could get him back to the theatre because he was really, really good. Uh, him and Bill were in, I think, two or three or four of my, of my plays and um, they were really, really great. Na natural comedians. I got it, I want it, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Hayward was absolutely crazy. How, how, how are we going to share this bed? Well, uh, I'll take the middle and you take both sides. All right. <laughs> I tell you what, Jack, why don't you read the headlines from your newspaper and I'll read the headlines from mine and see if we can mix them up, eh? Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is about me. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> yes. oh. Hayward to repeat Grabico speech. Oh. <laughs> Port Authority toilets back up. <laughs> and he had to drink a bottle of gin. And of course, on the last night, you know, you do all these tricks and things. So we actually gave him a real bottle of gin. Didn't phase him one more. Drank the whole thing down. But my experiences with Sir Jack were fun. And there have been people that I've been with on stage who really impacted my life. So they kept saying, you need, we need a Bahamian play. I said, okay, I'll write one. Well, actually, I didn't say I'll write one. I think I was forced to. And once I wrote Staff Room Gossip, I just got the bug and started writing more plays. Um, our older daughter, she um, uh, was approached by one of the young ladies who was dancing in um, Lois Silas' um, group. And she said, oh, is your father doing a, um, uh, a pantomime this Christmas again? And April said, I don't think so. My mother said she'd divorce him if she if he did. <laughs> so Oh excuse me. <laughs> I told you never on Sunday. <laughs> well in two thousand and four. Up to that period, we had a lot of roof problems. When it rained, it rained almost as hard inside the theater as it did outside. And in the spring of 2004, we finished replacing the roof. And in order to do that, we got people to donate $1,000, and they became lifetime patrons. The rest, um, our benefactor, Sir Jack, pitched in, and we were able to replace the roof. 
and thank goodness we did because I went on holiday with my family in September of 2004 and Francis came through a direct hit. This is a huge storm. We're talking about 18 hours of weather here, a very, very long duration event. When I got back, I had my own home to take care of and when I finally got to the Regency, opened the doors, went in, and I sat on the floor and wept. Up to row H was covered in mold and mildew. The stage was warped and buckled. Two feet of the red curtains were rotten from salt water. All of the sound equipment that had been left on the stage was gone. All of the wiring was gone. We were underinsured. So we got $75,000 from the insurance company and we had to find the rest of the money. After that, we had to change all the chairs. And in order to replace the chairs, we sold them for $250 each. And that paid for the chairs. And we had to replace the curtains. But we did it, and people always pitch in. And of course, our benefactor, Sir Jack, has always been there for us whenever we really needed help. The theater is, I understand, the only purpose-built theater in the Bahamas. Um, we had that year and years leading up to that so many fabulous functions there and excellent concerts and things that I remember some expats would say to us, I haven't seen things this good in Broadway even. So it really was and is a big deal on the island. So to have it look as shabby as it did when you entered just wasn't right. The wallpaper was fading and the floor was cracked in places. Unfortunately, the bar made of wood and formica was infested with termites and the bathroom tiles were old and dated. So we said, let's do it. Sandy Bragg came on board and she advised tans and topes to be contrasted with a nice deep red. And it looks luxurious, it looks very elegant. Um, Leo LeBlanc of Island Projects, who's now passed, sadly, he donated this fabulous fine granite to top the bar and the bathroom countertops. And when I walked in and saw the new reconditioned lobby, uh, it, it, it just staggered me. The, the improvements have been tremendous. I couldn't talk about the renovation of the foyer without mentioning Sir Jack and his donations, as well as the other um, contributors whom we have made honorary members. And then the entire work was the effort of Luckner, Timothy and his brother Francis, and a cousin, Edwin Valnor. And they were, I, th I swear they must have been sleeping there. Um, it's something that they should really be proud of. After 2009 and the foyer, which was major, um, it became obvious that the sound system at the theatre was really failing. We always had a problem with the sound. Wherever there was, wherever play you were in, there was a problem with the sound. As it was the taxi drivers, voices coming over. A lot of audiences would complain that they can't hear anything from the stage, it's muffled. You would hear the sound equipment crackling. You know, the committee would say, oh, it's about time we had a new sound system, so Kai and Andrea put one in. Some of the equipment, I understand, was up to 20 years old. Uh, Suzanne Baker suggested that we have an expert sound assessment. With Sir Jack's help, we changed all the amplifiers and the speakers, new soundboard, new uh, diff sorbers that now surrounds the walls of the theatre and helps control this reflective sound problem. The upkeep of the theatre has been wonderful and we have Jack, Sir Jack to thank for all that because that's his baby. I think that the pantomimes were were very good and very funny and the, um, the uh, Freeport audience looked forward to them because they um, liked Jack and Peter playing the um, two um, funny females in it. We had the big pantomimes that Peter Aston used to write and Peter Aston always wanted to get as many Bahamians as possible and he actually 
made references to what was happening in Grand Bahama. So everybody wanted to get involved in that. And I have to tell you, when you get involved in the theater, you get stuck. So the few of us who got involved, we started bringing our friends in. You know, for a time it was just Paulette and I and Darius Williams. We were there. Paulette and I were always given the trollop part. <laughs> My Fair Lady was a wonderful production. I enjoyed being in that one. It was just a first class production. Everything about it, from the directing to the acting to the singing to the costumes, it was just wonderful. I think it was uh, very professional. To me, it could have gone on, in, on Broadway. We've had a few productions that have been really, really stand out. I had the part of Eliza Doolittle. It was just absolutely amazing. I mean, everything about it. And Peter Aston, of course, was in it, and Jack Hayward, and Fiona Rushton, and a lot of wonderful, wonderful people who took it very, very seriously. Joan Hardy, Colin Hardy, Kay. You know, it was a real family affair. And my daughter was in it, Rachel was in it. The costumes were amazing. The level of direction was second to none. The music, everything. Set was Bert Sinden and his crew did an amazing job on the set. Sir Jack was in that, of course, and we had so much fun with him, particularly since he would never, ever learn his lines. My Fair Lady was, was, was fantastic. Susie Bruti directed that. <laughs> We've done Fame with the young people and Dream Girls. Um, Ain't Misbehaving, those are the most recent ones. A mat immense, but not too strong. I think uh, one of the first shows I was in was Oliver. I was one of the, you know, barroom things. And of course, we, we were allowed to have a drink in the interval. And after, straight after the interval was, I don't know if you remember, but um pa pa. But we had a couple of gins and we were dancing around and we were, I don't know how we didn't fall off the stage, but it was a very good atmosphere. I loved Oliver. And so my first one to direct was Oliver. In the bank, larger amounts. I'm afraid these don't grow on trees. You've got to pick up. He um, played the role of Fagin and Oliver. And it was just like he was meant for that role. Everyone said he was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Nancy. And it was Susan Jensen Sweeting that we gave the part to because her voice was so good. And somehow I'll be strong as long as he needs me. I mean, Chicago was incredible. Just the plays being put on Chicago, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. One could have been seated in a New York or London theatre. The musicals we've done have been wonderful. Some of the other plays we put on, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, we've come a very long way and we really are very, very professional, but it's thanks to the work of many, many people. Well, what do we say to it? We say nothing. We say absolutely nothing as if we never heard a word. Maybe we should inform the police. We're the air, for Christ's sake! <laughs> We're directing, I think, Drop Dead. It was just, everything came together. And, I mean, there've just been so many, many, and we're not finished yet. <laughs>